Hello everyone, my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are going to be discussing one of everyone's favorite topics, CNC aka consensual non-consent. And I don't yet have a standalone video, I think, where I've talked about CNC. It has come up in a few other discussions. If you want to know more about those, links down below. But today, I don't really want to do a 101. I don't want to go into like, what is CNC? Why are people into it? Like, that's another topic for another time. I think what I want to focus on here actually is a teachable moment because I was browsing through Reddit of all places and then out of nowhere I had this post recommended to me and I thought okay we need to talk about this we need to analyze what's happening here because CNC is very popular but it also goes wrong and this post on Reddit is a great example of how CNC can both be a very fun and alluring fantasy but also go badly pretty quickly. And so what I wanna do here is I wanna read this story, I wanna talk about it, I wanna figure out maybe where things went wrong, how you can learn from this experience, from this story, and not replicate the same problems and errors in your own relationship as you maybe want to explore this. Because to my mind, it's like choking. It's very popular, but also not very widely understood and that leads people into bad places where they are making judgment calls based on how they would behave during maybe more vanilla interactions and that doesn't translate one-to-one -one into what makes a kink dynamic work well. And I want to be clear here before I start, I'm not doing this to bash the person who wrote this. This is a very vulnerable thing to share and I want to honor that. It's hard to come out and say, hey, here's how I messed up. This is where I went wrong. And then especially on a vanilla social media app like Reddit, open yourself up to everyone on that website giving their opinion. And so... I don't want to say that what happened here was this person's fault. I think really the fault here lies with us not having a lot of communication around this, our understanding of how CNC in real life is so hard to do well compared to how it goes in our own fantasies. And so with that being said, I think let's go ahead and read the post. So this is posted on r slash TIFU, which is also better known as Today I Effed Up. And this is certainly one of those stories. And the title reads, Today I Effed Up by convincing my boyfriend to do CNC with me. And five days later, he is still convinced that he's a monster, which, wow, that is a heavy title to start off with, but it's accurate as we will soon see. And it starts by saying CNC is a sexual kink, consensual non-consent, which, you know, good. Let's define that for the whole audience reading this on Reddit because I'm assuming most people don't know what that is. I will maybe have a small side note bone to pick with calling it a sexual kink. I think broadly, a lot of people do fantasize about this as a sexual thing, but it doesn't have to be that way. We can talk about that more later, but just know while we're reading this, yes, that is true for this person. It is not true for everyone ever, and many people relate to this kink for multitudes of different reasons. But the story begins with I, 27F, am dating my boyfriend, 26M, for almost two years. We both are experienced people, so we had no problem establishing sexual boundaries and using safe words where it could satisfy both our needs in the multitude of sexual activities that we do. And they go on to list several of them. The second to last one I hadn't even heard of before, so if you want to Google that, be my guest, though do be warned it is explicit, <laughs> but uh, even I learn something new every day, so thank you for that. But 
Anyways, we love to keep things interesting and try out new things every once in a while. A couple weeks ago, I'd suggested that we take things to a new level and do CNC involving a little bit of edge play where he's the dominant and I'm the submissive. He was uncomfortable with it because he didn't like the idea of quote, forced sex. And I told him that it's not actually real if both parties are consensual. It's simply acting out a CNC fantasy with a consenting partner. He eventually agreed to do it a couple days ago because he loves to please me. And so we discussed everything from safe words to what defines as crossing the line. And no, I didn't pressure or force him into it. I only asked once. And so maybe let's start to analyze where this potentially began to go sideways. So I think there's some hints in this, like describing how you're taking on the role of he's being dominant and she's being submissive. To me, that indicates that kink in that fashion is not a typical part of their relationship. So while they have a lot of experience doing things that are more sexual in nature and more physically intimate, maybe kink itself isn't a big thing in their life. And I'm not surprised by that. As I've already said, this is a very, very popular fantasy. You don't have to even be kinky to fantasize about ravishment or forced scenarios. So of course, it doesn't mean that just because you know what CNC is, it does not mean that you're going to be able to go into this scenario with maybe the full understanding and education and mentality that maybe somebody who focuses on BDSM would be able to do. Now, do you have to be kinky and be in the BDSM community to like properly do CNC play? I think it depends on what level you're engaging with it because there's so many ways to do this from like the classic break-in scenario to something that's like more mild and romantic and like the force is very very soft and not even really that in, that apparent it's just something you're doing and like I don't know how to describe it like it doesn't have to be super hard heavy crazy multi-hour long sort of scenario where it goes completely off the walls and is super extreme like you can do this in a more reined in fashion but I think if you are doing this as a first kink or trying to do it without, you know, referencing it as being part of BDSM, you're potentially going to make some more mistakes. And I want to say here, I think they were on the right track by talking about everything like safe words, like where boundaries were, that is all very good to do. But I think sort of the initial first nugget of where we took the wrong path is already just in this paragraph and the preceding one, because CNC is not typically something you jump into right off the bat and have a good experience with. It's not something that you just do, I think, willy nilly to the level that OP describes as like, a, oh, let's spice things up in the bedroom by doing a break in scene. <laughs> like that's like there were multiple other steps that could have happened before we went to that extreme level and even more than that by itself because if you had both parties here like enthusiastically being like yes let's do that exact thing let's plan it like you could have that turn out fairly well i think where this started to go wrong though is there was doubt there was a sense of the other partner who's not writing this post being like I'm not really into that idea. I don't really want to do anything that's forced. And I think it's natural to respond to that by reassuring people and going, well, no, CNC isn't that. It's not for real. It's just, you know, a consensual role play thing, which it largely is. But even if you're not literally doing it in a forced way and it's not really actual coercion happening or whatever else, it still feels that way and your brain and your emotional response to that does not necessarily account for it just being pretend like to your brain especially as the top or the dominant partner even though you know that it's okay having your partner scream and cry and beg you to stop that feels real <laughs> like I don't know how to describe it like it's not just like oh it's just like oh baby please stop no don't do it and like it's like very hammed up and over the top like it can feel 
viscerally real in a way where if that's not your thing, it's disturbing to have to do that or feel like you have to do that to make your partner happy. Like I would, if I'm doing a CNC scene, I want to make 100, 1000% sure that it's happening with somebody that wants to do that to me, that is there with me every step of the way. And we have talked before about how I personally am not a huge fan of like enthusiastic consent as somebody who is asexual. Like I think that leaves me out of a lot of the equation of like how we talk about consent to communication. But I think for this, if in no other scenario, enthusiastic consent is the model to go for because it can end up being so disturbing for people and traumatic, not just for the bottom, but also definitely for the top as well. And I would not want to put somebody in a position where they had to mentally deal with that baggage and they weren't totally on board for having to potentially deal with that baggage. And yes, we can assume from this there was no begging or pleading or coercion happening to make this scene a reality, but still, even just putting it out there that like, well, but I want to do it anyway, even though you've expressed like some reservations. Like to me, that should be a, okay, no, let's investigate why you feel hesitation about forced interactions. Because maybe it could just be that the only thing they are worried about is it being forced for real. But I think for most people that have that wall there, so to speak, which is a perfectly fine boundary to have, they don't even want to mentally feel like they're even approaching that place. They want to know their partner actively wants everything happening to them. And I would want to investigate as a curious partner, okay, let's talk about why this thing isn't maybe what you're thinking it is. Let's investigate. Why do you feel that way? What comes up for you when you picture this? What do you imagine is going to happen? What are you afraid is going to happen? How does this make you think about yourself? What would the worst thing possible be in your imagination? Like I want to go into so much detail about what that mentality is before I ever even got close to going, okay, well, like if you're fine with it, let's do it. Like I think sometimes you do have to say no to things you really, really want to do because your partner's not ready to do it. And especially with maybe more vanilla activities, people are more willing to stretch themselves to make somebody else happy. They are willing to perform oral, let's say, even though it's not their favorite thing. And it's normal to compromise to that level. It's seen as a sign of a good partner to be willing to go out of your way to do things you don't like to do selflessly to make somebody else happy. But if you try to take that mentality of like, oh, he does it because he likes to please me into something so mentally extreme, it doesn't correlate. It's not like, unless somebody has maybe traumatic baggage around performing oral, for the most part, if somebody's willing to do that selflessly and like can stop very easily, like it's not necessarily gonna carry on with you in the way that doing a full blown break in CNC scene would be. And like, I don't really think anyone should be forcing themselves to do anything they don't want to do to please a partner. I'm very skeptical of that mentality of like, oh, you should always do it just because it makes your partner happy. And like, what's the big deal? Like, I think it can be a big deal, even maybe not once, but over a long period of time, over and over and over again, that can build up and cause like, I don't know, like a stress injury in your brain, essentially, of like, repeating something that's like a little bit negative, like multiplies it. Like, does that make sense? Anyways, we can have that conversation at a different time. Let's talk about what actually happened in this scene. So we picked the time at around 12, 15 AM as it is basically the scariest time of the night. I went downstairs to the kitchen and as I was pouring a glass of water, my boyfriend grabbed me from behind. I threw the water at his face to which he responded with slapping me across the face, grabbing me again and holding a knife my throat. He said, do that again and you're after which he threw me down on the floor, tied my hands and feet, during which I struggled the entire time as is my role, kicked me in my arm and then effed me really hard. At one point he was holding the knife again, but he accidentally pricked my skin with the blade, but it was fine. 
Yes, we used an actual knife. My boyfriend has had experience with edge play before, which involves using sharp objects such as knives, so I trust him to use a real knife instead of a dummy or extremely dull one. I also enjoy pain mixed with pleasure because the pain creates intense arousal for me. Some of you guys may think it's weird, but some people are into it like myself and some aren't and that's okay. Next hour or so we cuddled and I comforted him, but after that he wanted to be alone and collect his thoughts. So let's talk about the scene itself, shall we? Again, I think this is like the stereotypical classic scenario of like, let's do a CNC scene. For some reason, everyone always thinks of like, break in some kind of true crime scenario thing happening and then intercourse and like CNC is a very wide umbrella term. We don't have to go to like step 27 on the list to have a good CNC scene. And I will say this because I have to say it when it comes to edge play or knife play, which is like I'm going to say it's the real term. I know people will say edge play, but edge play to most kinky people means something very different than like using a knife. So knife play, generally speaking, sure, yes, you can use a sharp blade and a lot of people enjoy that sensation. I always recommend starting with a dull blade or something like a prop knife, but many people do enjoy using real sharp knives for their play. However, most people that are doing knife play with a sharp blade will not do it in an active bratting resistance play, somebody flailing around scenario where that could potentially happen. And especially not in a position where you are not 100% sure you will not accidentally cut somebody's throat open. In fact, whenever I have done scenes like this, typically, and I have an old video where I've shown this before, like the technique is more to use the flat of the knife against the neck and then maybe very occasionally run the actual sharp edge across there very very lightly because it's a sharp knife it is designed to cut things do you really want to be playing with this at midnight alone like this could end up being a news segment if you're not careful you know what i mean so like i just i, I would really really especially for a first time ever doing a CNC scene with somebody. That is like, you build up the new things very slowly. And I really recommend, and I'm trying not to make this like just purely educational in this fashion, but if you're gonna be doing a CNC scene like this, I recommend pulling back and like doing more safer things initially, even if in other scenarios you do things that are more dangerous typically, like using a real blade, because you are adding in so many other new elements to the role play that you're basically starting from scratch, trying to identify like, how's my partner gonna react, what's safe, what's gonna happen, especially with struggle and resistance play. If I know my partner is gonna be like, flailing around and fighting bondage and resisting really heavily, I don't want to have something like that happen where they are accidentally going to prick me. And even if it is just a prick, again, it goes back to the psychological, the emotional, the mental impact of doing play like this for the dom or the top, because I can almost guarantee you, I can picture what that top is thinking. And they're going, oh my God, I could have actually like, like my, my girlfriend, like for real, for what, for play, for, for 20 minutes of like a better than usual, you know, finale, like I, like I, oh, I can empathize with that so, so much because I can picture how I would feel doing that and I just wouldn't even want to go there. So no, don't recommend using a real knife for a first time CNC scene, even if you have used it in other contexts, like if it's a good enough scene for you mentally, gonna notice the difference between a prop knife and a glass of ice water and a real knife okay like it's is it really worth an extra five percent bonus for a first time ever seen where you're figuring out a lot of other stuff emotionally i don't think so so yeah that definitely i think if i had to pick a time during this scene where it started to go really mentally bad for the top of the dom that that might be one of them and actually you know what this is a great time to bring this point up tops and doms Use your safe words, okay? Like, I know a lot of times in CNC, people will say no safe words, no limits. You know, basically it's like a no holds barred, like cage match environment. But 
again, especially for a first time scene, exploring something like this that's novel to you and to your partner, safe words are great, okay? Use them liberally. And I know, especially as a top or a dom, when you know you're doing something that your partner really wants you to do and they're getting a lot of enjoyment out of it, it's hard to go, I should stop because I don't want to do this anymore. I don't feel comfortable anymore because it makes you feel wimpy and like a fake dom and like you're like they're not going to want to play with me again because I'm I'm not strong enough to be able to do this. They're going to judge me and like all of those like shame, guilt, all those nasty feelings come up and it's so hard to be brave to say actually you know what? I'm ending the scene. I got a red out. I can't do this. Like I'm sorry because you don't want to put your partner in a lurch, right? You don't want to like have them have a bad scene or bad drop because you ended the scene abruptly. I mean, even if you don't want to do that, you can recognize, okay, I'm not really handling this well. You can find a way to like gracefully, gradually end things so that way your partner doesn't have a like hard drop at the end. But you gotta look out for your own self and your own mental well being. And if you don't feel good mentally doing a scene, do not force yourself to do it as a dom or a top especially, okay? Safe words are for everyone. Limits are for everyone. It is okay to say, hey, this is going outside my limits mentally. I can't do this, you know, let's talk about it, okay? Anyways, let's talk about what happened after the scene was done. When I saw him the next morning, he said that he couldn't believe he actually did what he did last night and that he feels extremely disgusted with himself. Both my right cheek and left arm have bruises from where he slapped and kicked me, and I could see the pain and guilt in his face when he saw me, but I told him that I loved it and he shouldn't beat himself up over it because we were both consenting adults doing a little fantasy act, but I wasn't able to convince him that it was just role play and he isn't a monster. It's been five days since then. No words of affirmation, comfort, soft physical touch could help him. So yeah, I effed up real bad. All because of what? Some CNC fantasy that I've been trying to fulfill for years, but none of my previous partners wanted to do it? Now I've probably lost an amazing partner and lover because he still can't recover mentally and it possibly broke him. I'm an effing idiot. TLDR, I suggested to my boyfriend to act out a CNC fantasy with me, and now, no matter how much I comfort and reassure him, he's still pained with guilt. And that is a tough, tough ending to read. And sadly, that's oftentimes the reality with CNC play. It can be a really, really amazing fantasy. And sometimes it goes wrong. Sometimes as the bottom, you feel like you were actually violated for real. Sometimes as the top, you feel like the violator and it's too raw, it's too much. You feel this overwhelming sense of guilt and shame and especially if you're just doing it to make your partner happy and it's not your thing i mean that's really hard and i don't want to say this person is permanently broken because that's probably not true but it can break partnerships it can break trust in a way that is very very hard to heal from if ever because now when you see a partner wince or turn away or cover their eyes, you think about what you did to them and how wrong that made you feel. It became something where you were betraying your own boundaries towards yourself. You were betraying your own values for somebody else's pleasure. And then it went wrong and you couldn't handle it. And that makes you have to confront a lot of very deep, dark things about yourself, especially as a top, as a dominant, but also as an S-type as well. And I kind of get a little bit of a hint from the last part there of talking about like, this was a fantasy I've had for a long time. I couldn't ever do with anybody else. Like that longing of wanting to do that kind of play, I wonder how much the partner knew about that. Like if that was part of their calculus for deciding to do this scene or not and even if you're not directly pressuring somebody like we have to do this there are a lot of very subtle forms of even unintentional coercion that somebody can do to nudge somebody in the direction of saying yes to something they otherwise wouldn't want to do and 
when it comes to CNC and aftercare, yes, having a good aftercare routine, like cuddles and affirmation and all that, that like, can be helpful for people. But if he felt like he betrayed his values doing this, if he really feels like what he did made him a bad person, cuddling and watching Netflix isn't really gonna solve that on its own. I really, really recommend that for anyone who experiences this, if you have a really bad scene like this, please find some kink aware mental health support, talk to somebody else about it that's not your partner because I imagine they're gonna be the last person that you believe. You kinda need to have sometimes a third outside party tell you like, hey, it's okay to feel like that. And I get that. Also that other kind of instinctual response of reassuring the person that they did nothing wrong and it was always consensual. Like, yes, as a baseline, if there is any question about like, did you really want this? Was that okay? Yes, reassure the person. But at some point, I think the path isn't just like, glossing it over with like nice pretty words and watching movies and being all like sugary and lovey-dovey and like pretending something bad didn't really happen. The path forward isn't, you know, going, oh, well, you know, it wasn't really that bad. It was okay. It was fine. You can't just say that nothing bad happened, that everything was okay because they don't feel okay about what happened on the inside to themselves. And I think you can't just like it comes across as like denying that person's feelings unintentionally because you're kind of saying, well, you shouldn't feel like that because it was fine, right? You're irrational because of your emotional response right now. And even if that's not intended, that can be how it's received by somebody, especially who's very emotionally activated and is like feeling really crappy because that makes it easier to deny feeling better about it because they're going, well, you could set all you up, that doesn't really make it okay. And so I think the path forward is much more like, okay, yeah, like you feel really bad right now. You feel guilty. You feel ashamed of what you did. Let's explore that more deeply and not just tell you to not feel that way or that you shouldn't feel that way. That's invalidating and that can reinforce somebody in feeling isolated about their emotions because they're being told by somebody else that is really close to them, who is the only other person capable of really fully knowing what happened in that scene, you know, they're getting a message of like, well, but don't feel that way. Even if it's not really labeled that way, it's how it can be processed. But that is a very, very, very tough thing. And I think if you are somebody who is listening to this, if you have been contemplating, oh, I really want to try CNC, I, I really want to do a scene where my partner breaks into my apartment or whatever, this is a great example, unfortunately, of why you don't leap into that. And I know many people are in local scenes that really, really value like extreme play, right? Like getting into hook pulls and whatever else where being the heaviest, most extreme bottom is valued. And you know, if that's your true calling in life, go for it. But don't just follow the crowd because you think you have to. I think it's worth exploring these fantasies in more incremental detail. And you know what, it's funny actually, because a lot of the top comments on this, sometimes a little bit cheeky, but insightful, right? Like saying, OP skipped walking and running and went straight to jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> which is I think a pretty apt description for this and like people had some good perspective about this they said things like your big mistake was jumping to extreme CNC and not starting with the more mild versions for him to see if he was actually comfortable with CNC at all which I totally agree with and if he was where his line was with it to move forward you need to pull CNC off of the table and probably see if he wants to see a therapist which definitely definitely recommend that last part and somebody responded to that and said if I hadn't a word to give it, would be for this post. Seconding that you need to walk before you run with this specific scenario. Also echoing the being patient with him and suggesting he talk to someone if he feels like he needs it. Yeah, definitely, definitely that, all of that. Very much agree with it. And just because you have an exact fantasy of I need this thing to happen this way and these kinds of activities to be involved, Again, you can pull back, you can be cautious initially, and then build up to that 
it is okay to build up slowly over time. And in fact, I think you can do that in a way where it can build a sense of anticipation and desire and make it even so much better because you know that you're ready for it. You know that your partner is ready for it. I think it's like so much better than just like leaping straight into it right off the bat. That being said, I would love to know y'all's thoughts about this. And if you guys do want to know more about CNC and how to go about it, I think in a healthier way from starting off, like not really doing anything with it at all to being ready for a full on scene with it. I do have a video I did last month on my Patreon talking about break-in scenes, kidnapping scenes, CNC play along those lines. And it's, I think, a really good video. I put a lot of work into it. I think it goes into detail in a way that a lot of resources about CNC don't in areas that a lot of people kind of just like gloss over my focus is not on like teaching you how to like use a knife against somebody's throat but like the mechanics mentally and emotionally to make it a really good scene it's like super important so anyways if you want to check that out link will be to my patreon down below it's available for all patrons at ten dollars and over if you want to and you haven't already please do subscribe to my channel because i make videos twice a week about all sorts of different kink and bdsm related topics again i would love to know your thoughts about this one in a comment down below if you do cnc regularly if you've been wanting to but haven't yet i would love to know your perspective on this what you learned from it and if you have something that's coming to mind for you that i didn't cover please let me know and finally if you want to support what i do the best way you can do that is with patreon link to that will be down below if you do already support me there thank you so so much it means the absolute world to me and until i see you all next time i hope you have a great yesterday and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.